Hi everybody, I just want to do a quick review of gold, um, what's been going on uh, this past week. Uh, you can see Friday uh, was quite a good day for gold, uh, mostly an up day, um, so that's pretty good news. So on the MACD, um, gold traded positive from about 8.30 in the morning um, till about uh, 1 o'clock. Um, it's a little bit debatable on the volume, you can kind of see there was two um, major up ranges on the volume indicator here um, and then two major down ranges and actually uh, it reverted over to a negative downtrend um, perhaps uh, perhaps around uh, 215 or so you can see right here on the clear volume oscillator you can see right there uh, around 145 or so um, things started to get a little bit on the negative side, but then this thing still went up a tiny bit um, into the end of the day there. So in terms of the volume oscillator, you can see there was basically uh, one main section uh, that was pretty good to trade in. Um, that started around 7.30, uh, so you can see um, technically that the oscillator oscillated, uh, volume oscillator got above the moving average um, around 7.30, uh, and then so that was tradable there. Um, all the way to about 10, 15 or so, and then thing volume started to drop again. Um, or you could say uh, pretty much uh, until about 12.30 um, also looked pretty good too because volume was still pretty positive. On the volume profile, you can kind of see that we have two major areas um, of support here and then of resistance uh, up here at about uh, 16.72. Um, and then the support level is at 16.58, uh, and then there's also perhaps another one down at 16.24. So you can see that um, on the uh, force index here that this uh, volume spike that we had is pretty much the highest that we've seen since the start of October. And so it took us um, pretty much back to the start of October here. Um, and you can see there it's at 16.72. So I really like volume oscillators uh, in general. You can kind of see um, that the trading pretty much stopped. Um, according to the volume oscillator, you should start selling off uh, right here uh, around 2 p.m. or so. So we're really waiting for Monday morning um, for these volume oscillators to turn around, um, get more volume back into the market. Um, you kind of see on the 15 minute, um, there was a little section right in here that might have been tradable. Um, you can see that volume spike right here. Um, that was around uh, 3 p.m. or so, um, and that was a positive blip. So that was a sign that maybe we might have another um, up move on Monday. And the five-minute chart kind of shows what happened here. Um, you can see that there was some interest right at the end of the day here, um, kind of as the volume pushed higher, um, and then the price um, really at the end of this, when the volume finally uh, peaked back to a normal level uh, for the rest of the day, you can see um, it did kind of hit a little bit of a positive hit there, and then it kind of went down negative again uh, into negative volume, and then at right at the end of the day, we got uh, some positive volume again. So you can see here that the MACD basically stayed positive um, for the whole entire day, um, but um, the signal line, you can kind of see there were certain sections in here that had a little bit um, of negativity on it, even though it was a positive trend uh, for the day. And when you see the volume, uh, raw volume here, you can see that pretty much all the volume spikes um, were quite positive um, throughout the day. And even at the end of the day, you had a couple of spikes here that um, were all positive looking. So um, to me, that, that signs that was a pretty good day overall. Um, and that even into uh, the close here, you can see there's uh, some pressure um, that it might even go up further um, than uh, this peak right here at, excuse me, 16.58. So how much further are we talking going up here um, considering what has happened? So you can see um, there's basically three big spikes back in here um, that we see uh, and then a number of lower days. Um, kind of in this range here. So let's just mark that off and see what's been going on. So I'm gonna draw some horizontals here so you can see um, dating back uh, into here, you have some forces around that range. Um, and then you have a couple forces way up in this range. So it's unlikely that we're gonna see um, the kind of force that we saw um, on 
Friday uh, too much here, but um, it's more likely that we'll see forces uh, in the range of these. So we'll see these kind of pull-ups here. So if you measure that on a chart, for example, this guy right here, um, that right there is an 0.87% move. Um, so likely um, seeing these about 1% moves um, is more likely. Uh, we saw 1.55% move, which is quite high um, in comparison uh, to most of these others. So this right here, when we measure that, um, you know, is quite a lot. Um, it's about 40, 50K um, up into the 52K or so. Um, and then the average range is more like a 15K. So um, when you measure that, you know, it's uh, do the relative numbers. Um, you're seeing about a fifth to uh, a fourth of the uh, level. So basically, um, you know, even lower than that because most of these days are actually down in uh, to the 6K range. Now you can see, I always like to do a volatility uh, kind of graph uh, to see what's been going on. You can see that the volatility was pretty high back in the start of October. Um, there's kind of a general trend up here and then a down and then even an up again. So we are kind of getting into some more volatile landscape. So um, this range that we saw here was primarily a downtrend and then followed into an uptrend. So this uh, is pretty hot of an area uh, to be trading in um, 1640 eight or so you can see by uh, the average two range right in here. Um, and that's about seven points um, in a 60 minute period. If we look at that on the daily chart, um, the average range was about 35 points. Um, so we're right now at um, 31 points. So um, if you measure that 31 points up, for instance, 31 points takes us right to about here, um, which is the 1671 level. Um, now that, um, and even just above that slightly, it's 30 points. So you, you see the yellow line there. Um, you can see this is 27 points uh, to the line here. So um, it is possible that um, that jump um, of about 1.6% uh, may happen um, sometime in this next week um, and it's likely that could be up and down um, and then kind of wiggle its way up uh, from here we see the, the green candle here uh, showing a turnaround um, right on Friday so that was kind of a big day for uh, turnarounds so if we do see a turnaround um, you know this could pop up uh, up into this range here which is the next level of support um, and that's a pretty big move. That's about 4.8% um, move in the gold market, um, just up into 1722 land. Um, and then there's some other levels up in here. Um, so that does take some time. Um, you know, that's basically going into November um, to get uh, in that range, even at the earliest and perhaps even uh, mid-November um, to get back to that range. So um, that um mid-november looking a little more realistic so uh now so you can see that the on the daily chart here that the macd has not quite crossed over yet um so it's kind of getting ready for that you saw a green candle come in here so there's a closing in on the red and the green here so um we will be in negative territory um uh, for quite some time here uh for the macd um but um so there's certainly some downward trend um, and we'll probably get the confirmation on an upward trend around the start of November here. So it is a kind of a gamble um, for these next um, this next couple weeks here um, until we see um, a pretty positive trend here. And then once we see that positive trend, um, this could go up uh, quite a bit. Uh, so we could hit here and then we could hit another level back into here, uh, which is about 18 uh, 09 level, but that that again could take uh, into uh, start of January or February of the next year. So um, there could also be a downtrend. Um, likewise, so um, 
but um, seeing the downtrend that we've already had, we kind of do need to, to have the balance here, um, uh, some uptrend on this um, that makes sense uh, with prior pricing, um, you know, up into this level of 1950 or so. So um, I don't think we're going to hit that, um, you know, anytime soon. Um, it'd be uh, definitely into next year um, if we did see something like that. So the stochastic, uh, which measures highs and lows, um, generally has picked out some good plays here. You can see um, on the daily chart um, that it did find, uh, for the most part, this uh, down move here, uh, and it found a little bit uh, this up move here. It kind of got to a peak low area um, and then reverted. Uh, starting on, uh, well, it's the 27th of September. So, um, and then peaked out here. So you can see um, that we are kind of in a turnaround phase here, um, making uh, basically it did, it uh, looks like it made a lower low here, which was not a good sign. So uh, just slightly or basically bouncing off of that. Um, so this, here because there was so much pressure on the negativity and then less pressure on the negativity kind of bouncing around quicker uh, to me indicates that this is actually a higher low. So um, basically bouncing here, um, we could bounce again and kind of show some of the opposite effect here uh, in the next days. That's possible, um, kind of going down a little bit um, before we actually do a crossover. Now the RSI, um, World of Strength Index shows that this indeed was um, not as significant of a down move as all of this stuff here. Uh, so we did hit kind of a lower low here uh, than we did here. So this bounced off here, uh, and then that's also because we had the higher high here um, relative to these two peaks here, and it looks like uh, even a third peak. So this was quite a strength move up, um, reverting from the price range here so you can see there's kind of a 16 uh, 59 area on the volume profile um, but this doesn't go back very far because this is a december contract and the december didn't start trading um, until recently so um and you can see that there was quite a negative uh, period here so we've kind of been making a little bit of progress on the positive side um and that certainly um has hit um you know, it was a little bit better back in here. You can see this on the RSI. Um, there's just more peaks in here. And then this kind of um, maybe showing a sign of a quick bounce back around. So we will know um, if that is a quick bounce back around uh, at the end of October here. So we're kind of headed into this, whether we're going to do this kind of peak or this kind of peak. Now, obviously, uh, this kind of peak is a better peak, uh, showing more support. At that level so we see that we have um kind of a quick turnaround here so the people did not like that price uh here did not agree with that price and then turn around quickly um whereas this kind of fluttered a little bit more um at the 1804 level so it is possible if we break um 1727 that it could just go up directly to 1804 um but again um, how quickly that happens is a debate. Now you see there was bigger jumps um, back here on this, and we saw a pretty aggressive upturn. Um, now how quickly we make it up there, um, you know, it could just explode and drop back down and then go up again um, or something like that. Um, and you can see there's even more support in this range, but just wasn't um, as high of a move um, as this one so um, you know and this kind of um, you know this you, you can kind of look at these support levels and kind of compare um, what's been going on so the rune indicator also measures higher highs and lower lows um, and you can see that uh, this rune indicator is 16 units so the for the 16 units this is still pretty negative um, going back 16 you can see that this was a high here so we still have quite a ways to go to kind of break um, the trend here. We do see that this was not exactly at zero, which zero would be around in here. Um, and you can see uh, that uh, those ranges right here show this 
being negative again. So the red trend here indicates that it's still a red trend downtrend. Um, and that will be red for quite some time until we get uh, some more confirmation. So basically, you're going to see this one being high. Uh, we're going to be in a red downtrend until um, this one makes above here, which could be, um, you know, certainly into November, uh, first week of November. So that's 11, 7. So that is some hard trading um, to get back there, according to the rune indicator. Um, it just doesn't show uh, the positivity. Like even here, um, as it's dropped here, you can see um, this still wasn't um, a peak for the last 16 points. Now I do have the Arun indicator for eight units and you can see here that we're still on a low. We did have a high streak here um, and you can go significantly higher than that. Um, on the rune indicator, um, but it was basically a positive trend uh, right up until about here on the eight units. This is uh, measuring eight units back. Um, so, and then now it's still downtrend. So, um, you know, we'll have to break uh, up into here, and this should start turning around pretty soon here. So, on the commodity channel index uh, indicator, I just been starting to use recently. Um, seems to be pretty helpful it moves pretty fast uh, and you can kind of see some changes in here so this is a 16 period um cci and you can see that we've kind of gone through these negative phases in here and this was just a little blip uh comparison so that's a pretty good sign um we saw a pretty high sign too recently here so and also here but this just doesn't compete um with the negativity that we saw here uh, below zero so um Really, we're looking to get this up uh, above zero uh, by the end of uh, the week here. So that um, brings us basically to around uh, 16, 1700 flat um, for the week, maybe um, to get, excuse me, the commodity channel index back to zero. So once we are at that level, um, that's really when we start to see um, the major uh, money starting to come in because it's just not positive enough until we see um, that move. So there was a big move here and you can see on the volume that was pretty high here and you can see pretty high here. So it was a pretty big move uh, on Friday. Um, so that should uh, be enough to take us up pretty high here. So and then once we get uh, into 1027 here, there should be uh, a lot more uh, upward range to go. The RSI just doesn't show that kind of data. Um, it shows more of a, a low range here, uh, bouncing around, uh, kind of always hitting this peak here and then kind of dropping. So that is a possibility, um, you know, just that we will kind of come up maybe a little bit higher this time um, based on the angle here. So you can measure angle on that move and that was a 58 degrees and then this move here um 118 degrees so um you know it just a little bit different so the bad news on the 60 minute rsi is that we're already pretty high here um according to this and we kind of need to drop a little bit um, before we continue on um as a high move at least according to rsi so if you look at the commodity channel index and you trace this back to the last move, you're seeing this move right in here, which is almost identical. Uh, and you can see peak to peak, we're looking at the same move. We did drop a little bit um, after this move up. So it did, um, it does look almost identical here. You can see this drop here and this drop here and then followed by this. So it did hit a, even a low here, but not quite. Um, so that did drop back. A bit now it might not do that so it could bounce more like this um, just a little bit downtrend and then up um, again with two more peaks um, we did see these two peaks here um, kind of reversal and then we see another two peaks here bringing that uh, right into this range of 1676 um, kind of as a, a trade with this but it didn't have the same force as that other move and you can see even here we saw a pretty strong force up uh, and then fall by pretty strong forces down all the way into this move that we saw here so 
Um, where this goes, um, you know, really depends on one of these two moves here. Um, and even these moves back in here weren't quite matching with what we see here. So perhaps this is uh, the move that we saw. Um, now that brings us way up here. So that, um, it just doesn't look like we have the same force. But when you look at the volume here, you can see underneath um, this volume, actually the volume that we saw recently on Friday was more than the volume here. Um, so this just doesn't, quite show um, the answer. Now this is a volume and price indicator, which is basically money flow, right? And you can see that we are indeed above that because the volume was pretty positive on Friday. So we can see we're quite above uh, that range. So that could technically bring us about halfway uh, into 1692, just on this move being more positive. Uh, than what we saw back in here. So um, this move was quite good. Um, you can see about the similar kind of um, downward trend. Uh, we saw some upward and downward, and then this kind of bounced off of this. So it was quite similar in some respects, but we just saw so much volume uh, on Friday uh, that it took us way above these levels. Now we can't look too far back on these charts um, just because the volume does kind of die out here. Uh, but we can see that that move, positive pricing was just way good um, compared to everything that we've seen. So this move suggests that we really want to go up um, from here and we just don't see anything that competes um, on any of these price ranges. So basically, um, all these are fair game uh, for the kind of move that we saw um, going up on Friday. The only bad news really is that, you know, this move was so fast and so up, um, we really didn't even see, you know, we might see kind of a reversal pattern of what we saw here. We didn't quite make it uh, to the MACD move. So this MACD, the, the upward trend just didn't have the volume on it uh, that we saw on Friday. Um, so we saw that this, this might be even a reverse pattern of what we're seeing here and we could make it even up into here, but making it beyond that um there might just not be enough buyers in the market um to bring us past here so we might just buy 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 and then you know it could just kind of flatten out uh just before 1700 here so um just based on the macd there just isn't i mean there's just so much buying going on that people might get a little bit uh it just might not happen and with all the downtrends in the market and the stock market recently um, just over the last few months and then you know uh, basically the price of gold going down here it's just it's just possible that we could buy into this and then not make it much further um you know and that where this bounces here really does determine how much strength we have in the market um do we have this kind of strength that we had uh back in the start of october um it looks like we do um and then if we look further back, um, you know, we're still not, uh, we're not getting anything uh, like we saw in October, the start of October yet. So we still have to go quite a number of days um, just to get this positive trend. And we could get quite positive. Um, you know, this wasn't too long ago, um, but there was a rally uh, starting uh, right around here. Uh, this is uh, July all the way to um, uh, 812. So, uh, and that was a pretty strong move. It was stronger than here. Now, are we seeing kind of a reversal here? Could this potentially get higher than that? Yes, you know, and that could be happening quite soon uh, in a move here, um, depending on what kind of positivity we see on the gold market. So it's unlikely that we'll see, if you just draw a straight line here and double that, um, you see that into November. So it's likely that we'll see some up and down days. That's more healthy maybe than just seeing a straight up day and then followed by some down days, straight down days. So we don't really want to see that scenario, um, but um, it could be fast. So, uh, but it's more likely that's kind of hit in between range, which would be put us into November, um, making uh, kind of a halfway point here uh, on the MACD.
So we are still very much in a downtrend uh, in the gold market. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we are definitely in a downtrend. Um, now, <coughs> with this big volume spike that we had um, and the big price move um, being one of the biggest uh, since uh, essentially uh, 9 of 28, um, this move um, was not quite as big um, as the 928 move, um, but the volume was there. So the volume, given the volume pressure on the positivity here, um, that was pretty good. So we are seeing pretty much the biggest move that we've seen in a while on Friday. Um, so there is definitely um, some positivity here um, looking forward uh, into this market. Um, where that goes, um, you know, we talked about the November possibilities here uh, primarily. So we're really looking um, this move really pushes us into November, um, or at least uh, at least the first week, first or second weekend of November. This is a really positive move. So um, we should see some general positivity um, because of that. Um, all this negative downward trends, um, pretty much this uh, says that this was a very important move on Friday. So uh, it does kind of push us pretty higher uh, into November. So for some reason, I really like this 15 minute chart as the last kind of chart to look at. Um, you can see that um, we did kind of have a break here where we wanted to push higher um, starting on the 19th. And this kind of continues this whole downtrend um, that we saw really in, it invalidates it. Um, but it kind of validates it a little bit because you can see that this this trend was looking to push higher um, than uh, this trend actually. So. It, when you kind of double this up, but then this trend here was really strong until about the end of the day here. So there is kind of a push um, up here much higher than the current price level. Um, so this range and this range, this definitely pushed down too. So you can see the steepness of this was quite uh, traumatic and this probably beats it out um, just because the volume was on it. There wasn't a whole lot of volume. You see on the volume here, there wasn't a lot of volume on that. So it just means that the, this wasn't an accepted move like this was. So this was a much more accepted move in the market um, in general, the uptrend here. So, And then that kind of peaked right in this level. So you can see that 1650, that was when the market, uh, the volume started to calm down a little bit. Um, so there's definitely a backlash between this downward move here. Um, whatever hit here um, in the market wasn't accepted um, on Friday. So I'm just going to close uh, kind of the whole discussion looking at volume here. Um, and basically um, volume being kind of the key to understanding what's going to happen in the next month. So, you know, we basically see these trends where we have higher volume uh, and kind of outpacing the positive, the negativity, um, the positive being pretty strong here. Um, and then some downward trends and then followed by another uh, positive trend here in volume. So, uh, and then kind of near the end of the day, kind of dropping off. So uh, it's likely that we'll see the same pattern uh, quite often um, in the market. Um, this is a very typical trend. Um, the start of the day being pretty positive in volume and then kind of tapering off. So most of the good trades uh, for the next week being in the earlier parts of the day um, up until you can see around uh, 12, 15 or so. So uh, that being pretty solid here, you can see on this side, uh, the trade of the day being 9.45 to about uh, 11.30. Um, and then you can see here, um, some trading being done earlier in the morning um, and not so much uh, during the day. You can see kind of a downtrend. So if we do see these downtrends, um, you can see that this was kind of a slower move uh, relative to the volume that we've seen. So um, it's likely that um, if there is lower volume um, in these next days, that that's where we're going to see the negative downtrends. Um, and those will not be quite accepted. So even if there is a downtrend, um, because there wasn't much volume behind it, we can kind of invalidate some of those uh, downtrends. And that's what happened right here, right? We saw this big downtrend that makes for a good buying opportunity um, in there.
And so if we are looking for buying opportunities, uh, we really want to focus on the volume um, or selling opportunities, right? So you can see here was a higher volume region on a downward trend. And you can see that the volume here was above the moving average. Um, and that was still a, a pretty good selling range. You can see that happen all the way to here. There's all this good selling here all the way into about here, right? Where it started to go back positive again. So we do see um, that most of that, most of the trend has happened on higher volume. Um, and we can kind of um, base some of the trades on that. Now this downward trend was a hard to trade trend um, in general. But um, anyway, so I hope this has all helped you really understand uh, what's going on uh, with the price action um, and just basically get you some ideas um, for what to trade um, in the next uh, couple weeks into November. Um, if you have any questions, you'd like to discuss things in more detail, we do have a Sunday meeting uh, that we talk about online um, with some friends. I'd be happy to talk. We talk about uh, primarily futures um, and gold and currency um, and oil and just general stocks too. So um, it is kind of a small group discussion. Uh, we try to do it on uh, Google Meetups. Um, I'll try to post a link um, and we can talk more uh, if you like uh, to discuss the details uh, in person one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I hope this has really helped you out. Thank you.